Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to look at Crokinole Imperium. This is designed by Coulter Hahn and Dr. Stephen Brown. This game is made and published by uh, Brown Castle Games. Brown Castle Games is a friend of the channel. They have supported a lot of our community events with their Crokinole tournaments. We have a, the Butler Library Game Day, and they've been to our local conventions, CosCon and SibCon. So I was super excited to review their game. Their game here has three different modes inside of it, and it is really, really nice quality case and cards. Let's go ahead down the table here. I'll give you a general idea how these work, and I'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. <music> All right, so we're going to look at Crokinole Imperium, which is going to mean Imperium meaning Empire. And I just want to show off this, this case. It's amazing. I really, really love this case that the game comes with. And it actually has this magnetic clip right here, so it closes nice and neat. And in this game, you're going to have three different decks of cards that you can use to play Whoops, during the game. I'm going to set this aside here. So... Get a nice instruction manual, but you're going to have this Subrosa deck. You're going to have these Freelancers. And you're going to have Terra Nova. Okay. So those are the three different decks that you're going to have available to play in the game. And you can, you can use multiple decks in a game. Uh, there's going to be some rules that you can look up that are going to... Um, remove some of the cards. Uh, some of the cards here will have a little symbol on them stating they're going to contradict with some of the other rules with the other ones, but you would just remove those. And you can play with multiple in there uh, to make a very uh, epic game of Crokinole. Now, just uh, right off the bat, you have to follow the regular Crokinole rules. Unless a card says otherwise, the base rules of Crokinole are in effect in this and you're going to set up to uh, teams or 1v1 to play this game Sabrosa is going to be the deck of deceit so Sabrosa is deceit and trustery amid, amidst only the kingdom's most valued lords and trusted with a secret mission to overcome their opponent's defenses as knights gather under the rose in the dying hours of battle they pledge themselves to secrecy sabrosa meaning under the rose is a latin phrase that has been used in medieval ages to denote secrecy and confidentiality will your secret plans be enough to tip the scales in your favor all right so in sabrosa what you're going to do is you're going to hand out one card to each player. They're going to keep these secret and they're going to try to complete these objectives. One thing that's different in here is instead of playing to 100 points, you're going to play till 10 points. So it's a different scoring mechanism for Crokinole. Crokinole can go at a 10 point basis if you want, but basically the way it's going to work is if you complete your objective, you're going to get a point. If you win the round, you get a point. If there's a tie for any reason at the end of the round, both players get a point. If both players complete their objective, they get a point. So first person team to first team to 10 points wins and there's two different types of uh objectives that you can have during the game so this one here uh where you say the post in there is going to be one that you have to have at the end of the round this one has to be during the game so this one here you have to knock two opponents discs into the gutter with one shot and if you do this you'll get your point uh and it doesn't matter if you win or lose with these, you're going to get your point if you complete your objective. Here, uh, together, you have two of your discs in the same 5, 10, or 15 point region at the end of the round. So that's the Sub Rosa. Basically, there's a giant deck in here, so there's going to be tons of different objectives that you can go through. The next one out is going to be the Free Lancers deck, which is going to be this blue deck right here. All right. So the freelancers, soldiers, cavalry, and valued resources become scarce within the land. Desperation draws the attention of mercenaries who are eager for coin and plunder. Freelancers is a term that came to be 
during the medieval ages, which refers to mercenaries whose lance was free of any lord's service. Each kingdom seeks victory, must fortify their ranks with skilled mercenaries to be careful to not be not to let their valuable skills go to waste. So at the beginning of every round, you're going to get one of these freelancer cards. And these freelancer cards are going to be similar to the Subrosa cards. So this has to be during play. And these are at the end. So at the end of the round, gain additional five points for each of your discs that score 15 points. This one here, when you knock an opponent's disc into the 20s, it scores no points and goes to the gutter instead. So these ones here are mainly just sort of like cool little mean things that you can do during the game. And it's only once, so you just have to be aware that they're there. If you play with the Subrosa cards at the end of, well, at the end of the round, uh, the winner will get one point. If there's a tie, both will get one point. First team to 10 points wins. If you use the Subrosa cards, they can get an additional point. They're not going to get, um, they're still only going to get one point if they win and one point if they can put the Subrosa cards, if those are used together. The next deck is going to be the Terra Nova deck. The Terra Nova deck is basically another deck that you're going to flip one card over, but it's going to be global. Each kingdom looks to conquer a new land. However, challenging terrain proves to be an obstacle to overcome. Terra Nova is a Latin phrase that means new land. Learn the train and you may be able to use it to your advantage. However, failing to adapt may bring the end to your conquest. So you're going to shuffle this Terra Nova deck and you're going to flip a card over and add an additional rule to that round. At the end of each round, discard that Terra Nova card and flip a new one. All right, so now these ones here, like this one here, says Mountain. After each valid shot, you may stack your shot disc on any disc involved in play. Disc scored an additional five points for each under disc underneath. Now this one here, global rules, really cool because it will make it so that if you stack your disc on an opponent's disc and they still have to make a valid shot, so they do have to hit your disc, but when they do, they're going to hit their own disc out. So this is a really cool like way um, rule that you can make it pretty different during a crokinole game and there's a ton of them in here so these ones are pretty straightforward when you get these ones you're just gonna this is gonna just add a global rule to the game of crokinole now at the end of the round whoever wins is gonna get one point if there's a tie both get one point first team to ten points wins you can use the freelancers with it so each one will have a freelancer card and you can use the Subrosa cards with it. If you use the Subrosa cards with it, uh, if they complete their objective for the Subrosa, they will get an additional point. And that is going to be the three different decks that you're going to get with Crokinole Imperium. Let's go ahead back up to the table here and I'll give you my final thoughts on this game. So I really like Crokinole Imperium. They put a lot of love in this game. There's, I love all three different modes. They play basically, like I said, over top of the existing rules for Crokinole. These are going to be like additional uh, things that you do during the game. Uh, Sub Rosa is really nice because you have that little tiny objective that you're trying to get. So it makes it act a little weird towards either during the game or towards the end of the game where you're trying to, to get these things lined up. You're like, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to line up my stuff to get my point. I uh, also like going to 10 points instead of 100 on there. It's pretty nice. Uh, you don't have to worry about like adding up someone getting like an enormous score during a game they just get one point if they win and one point for completing the sub rosa card uh i also like the freelancers the freelancers give a nice cool ability you can fire off either during the game or in the end of the game depending on the card and i love terra nova which does a global effect during the game and you can play with them all together my suggestion would probably be play with the terra nova cards first because they are they add a lot of fun to the game and it's something both players have to do. And then maybe work in some of the Sub Rosa, so you have the Terra Nova, and then you do the Sub Rosa, so you have like a little objective in there. And then work into the Freelancers. Or mix and match whatever you like. 
lot of options and a lot of stuff to spice up your regular croconol game so if you love croconol or you want to get into croconol and you want to have a little bit more fun on top of the croconol game which is also just amazing by itself i would highly recommend picking up croconol imperium thank you for watching Thank you.